Good morning, Maniacs. Welcome to today's video. Today, we are going on to the next step of our gray water system, which is a big one. We're gonna cut a big hole in our floor for our shower pan. And we're gonna show you a little bit of how we plan on doing our plumbing into our tank. So let's get to it. Previously on Gus the Struggle Boys. <laughs> Meredith and Paco is around here somewhere. Um, we are converting this 40 foot school bus into a tiny home on wheels. And we are at the stage where we are wrapping up the majority of our plumbing and installing our gray water tank underneath our bus. We will not have a black water tank because we will have a composting toilet and it won't be necessary. So just the gray water, our fresh water is inside underneath our bed in the very back. And let me walk you through where this whole system is and will be going. Hold up. So this section from this wall all the way to the couch is going to be the countertop for the kitchen. Right here in front of this door somewhere will be the sink. Underneath the sink will be the water heater mounted on this wall and then the drain that goes down to the gray water tank from the sink. We will have a hepto valve and then a pipe that just goes straight down into the tank. Continuing down on the other side of that wall is gonna be our shower. And we bought a humongous shower tray, which we'll explain why later, but it has a center drain. So somewhere around here, where that dot is, you can't really see it, but that will be a drain going straight down to our gray water tank. And then this fancy little platform here will have our composting toilet on it, but we're not about that pee tank life and emptying it every day. So we are going to attach another hepto valve to that and go straight through the floor into the gray water tank. So each drain for each connection will have a hepto valve on it. These things are amazing. They have been known to be way better than P-traps and they are basically just a one-way valve. So the water can go through but nothing can come back up. Water, smell, anything. A little bit of smell might come up because that's just how it is but it keeps the water from coming back in the wrong direction and as much as you can coming back up. Then the separate entrances that we're having to make into the tank, we're going to be using one of these Uniseal uh, gaskets. It's a pretty simple gasket, but it does the job. So it has a seal around here that you will pop into and slide into the hole that you cut. It has a ledge on the inside so your pipe can't stick too far into the tank. It gives it a place to stop. And then this part that sticks up is the part that goes around your pipe when it's sticking out and it really makes it airtight. The uh, P drain that we've been talking about, we'll be using the extra of this and then we'll get a protective wrap for it. And then a combination of 45 degree angles and these hose clamps along with its own uh, hepto valve and that will enter into the side of the tank where it already has a connection. The last thing we'll be doing is we add one more uh, gasket and then a little air valve in order to let air go out of the tank just like we did with the tank on the inside. And we'll get more into detail when we start working on each one of these things. What could this be? I'm so excited. our shower pan which also means that we are gonna have to cut a hole in the floor the size of this mamma jamma 
This is a 60 by 30 shower pan. Now, we are not particularly very tall people, but we want to have as much headroom as we can, especially in the shower where your arms are coming up and moving around. Now I have to take it out and dry fit it in the bathroom without breaking anything. Check that out. Oh my gosh, it's huge! Yay! Do we go take a shower too? Okay, so this is our dry fit. This is what we've got going on. The only issue that we're still trying to figure out is that because this pan is made to have the door or the opening on one side, it has a lip all the way around except for this side. So this section here that's still in the shower and everything, we might have to figure out what to do there, but I'm very excited about this. So what we're gonna do is use this oscillating tool with this blade to go ahead and cut. We're gonna power this off of our own home that is hooked up through the inverter uh, to the solar system. Just say that like it's no big deal. Just say it like it's no big deal. Uh, so we're gonna cut out a, a small section of this area so the actual pan can fit in here. So we're gonna start with cutting this piece out first with this oscillating tool. So now we're going to try to lift it up just so that this piece comes out. Okay, so now we're going to put the pan back here in this spot we cut out, very stressful, so we can see, make sure it fits, and then trace out where the drain goes. What are you doing in there? Now you can scoot it towards you, unless you grab the drain. Do you want me to do something? Can you scoot it? Now I'm going to mark where the drain would go so I can cut it out, which is going to be very nerve wracking, but uh, it's something we got to do. And we'll cut that up. looks like he's drilling the drain for the shower and here's where it ended up oh. so that's the current situation <laughs> 
たらーおー OK Welcome to the next day We have cut out our drain hole And we painted it last night before we left To just protect this area might put a couple more uh, coats of paint just to make sure it's protected. But we did have to end up cutting out this section of the beam. So we're not super thrilled about that, but we didn't have another option. This beam on this side actually sits on top of the main beam under the bus, so it's still extremely supportive. This one you can tell it's not as supportive, but it's attached to the side of the bus. And then there's immediately one right here and right there so it's still very supported in this area so yeah and then one going right here this way and then the pan sitting on top of the whole thing supporting the whole area and then this is the main part of the showers but regardless it still is plenty supportive but that is not an ideal solution we didn't have an option so we're moving on hoping for the best we have cut it out we grind it out and uh, flap wheeled to get all the edges off. This is some paint um, just sticking out. We flap wheeled it to make sure that there's no sharp edges. We made sure everything fit. Our drain hole fits perfectly. So let me show you our drain. This is the one that we're going to be using. But because our shower pan is going to sit pretty much on the floor, this big part has to go through the floor too. So we didn't just have to drill a hole this size, we had to drill a hole this size. So we tested it, it fits out great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this actual drain onto the shower pan and then put the whole thing down in here just to double check that the hole is in the right place and that everything fits perfectly. So we'll show you how we install this shower drain using everything that's on here and this plumber's putty. So the first thing we're doing is just from putting the pan in and out, it's gotten really dirty and nasty. So the area that we are actually putting the putty on, I made sure to keep nice and clean and then make sure it got really dry and wiped it out. So this is a Dreamline 30 by 60 shower pan. And whenever we were ordering it from Home Depot, it suggested a couple of different drains that work best with it. And this is the Oatly uh, drain system that we're using, and this is a residential system that we're using, not an RV specific one or making our own because we just weren't going to do that. So the first thing that it does is it, it has a video online telling you step by step, and it's super simple. You have this plumber's putty, and the first thing you do is you get a good amount out and you roll out a bead to go all the way around the drain. So I might need more, but you get a good amount. And it's like playing with Play-Doh. Just make whatever you want. Great. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do after that is you're gonna get your drain and take all the components off until you're left with just this part. And then inside this lip, that is where you're gonna lay your putty. All the way around. So, you just set it around the edge like that, then you don't twist, you just push it in, you set it right in here, and you just push down. Don't twist, just push. So it comes with a gasket and something called a friction gasket, which kind of just looks like a piece of cardboard, and then this part that helps everything screw on. So you go gasket, friction gasket, and then the end piece that screws on, put those on, then you're going to twist it on, you're going to twist it on as far as you can with your hand, and then they had this giant wrench that they twisted it with, but we are improvising, so we are going to use clips. See all the putty squishing out. Oh wow. <laughs> I don't know how tight to make it. One thing you need to know about me, I don't quit until something tears or pops. I never know with you. So now you go back to the other side where all your putty is squished out and you simply just wipe off everything that came out. The guy made it look really easy. But his pan was different than ours.
Now I'm going to move the shower pan in here and hope that it fits perfectly in place. <laughs> Fingers crossed. If not, we're selling the bus. <laughs> One million dollars! <laughs> and this is what it looks like down here. You see that drain valve right there. I think that's Meredith's butt. The blue thing right there. Okay, so our pan fit down there in really well. It does have a little bit of a wiggle to it, so we are talking about putting a support beam underneath, going opposite direction of all the other ones, pretty much um, just to hold up that one area. So we will um, consider doing that and trying to figure out how to put that in. But the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide our tank underneath and mark where this drain hole is gonna fall based on the contraption we've come up for our shower drain. So let me show you that. So we're on the outside of the bus now and now I'm gonna go over this nonsense contraption that we have that's gonna be our shower drain. So we talked about how we are gonna be using something called a hep, hep, a hep flow valve. I can't say it. And it is a one-way valve like I showed you with that little, um, it's like a rubber seal on the inside to where the water can only flow one way. It has an arrow on it that shows you which way it's supposed to go. And the size that we got is a one and a half inch. So it comes with a couple connections. It comes with um, an elbow just in case you need to put it at an angle. And it also comes with an extension and um, just different ways for you to connect it to your system. So what we found out the hard way is that it is actually originally meant for RVs, not for residential uh, use. So all of the residential piping doesn't fit into it. You have to get specific type of piping. So for instance, this is a one and a half inch size like I told you. This is the extension part that it comes with and it has this gasket around the inside to where you tighten this piece and the gasket tightens around the pipe. So a one and a quarter inch pipe is supposed to fit in here, but it has to specifically be one and a quarter inch outer diameter. So a thin pipe, not a regular pipe. So you have to look for a thin pipe if that's the way that you're gonna do it. And we might have to explore that whenever we uh, use this part for our sink, but we're not there yet, so we're not messing with it. But in order for this system to work for our shower drain, we had to come up with this. Our main focus was getting from the shower drain to the tank in the shortest distance as possible so we can raise the tank up as high as possible so it's not hanging off on the side of the bus and it's protected with that um, side piece of the bus. And we kept having to do these conversions in order to get it to fit correctly and it kept getting longer and longer and longer. So we had to make it go sideways and then down into the tank instead. So this is what we have here now. One thing that I wanted, I do want to say before I start is that the HEPFO valve does not come with two uh, angles. We happened to buy two because we needed two HEPFO valves of the same size and we grabbed one of the angles, one of the 90 degree angles from one of it and it happened to work out exactly how we needed to. So let me explain this to you. So we had to go from the shower and the shower is a two inch pipe. We got a reducer from a half inch to, uh, from a two inch to a one and a half inch. This is a small piece of one and a half inch regular residential style plumbing. And this right here is a, I think it's called a trap adapter. And it goes from a one and a half inch, from a one and a half inch um, PVC pipe to a mail so it can go ahead and tighten on to this. And this tight onto it perfectly. Then we went ahead and put a 90 degree elbow that came with the actual helpful valve, the actual helpful valve itself, another 90 degree angle that we got from another helpful valve. And then we got this one. And this one comes with the one and a half inch female side so we can tighten it onto there and a side for the PVC to go into. So this is a one and a half inch PVC. This goes perfectly into here. And this is the gasket that we'll go ahead and drill into the actual tank itself. So it can then drain into the tank. Bada boom, bada bang, you got yourself a shower drain. Let's go. We're going to work on setting our pan in place permanently. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to pick the pan up again. Underneath it, we have some leftover kill mat. What's up, kill mat? Thanks, guys. 
we have some leftover kill mat and we're gonna put a layer of that underneath it just for sound and a little bit of insulation uh, it's most most of its purpose is sound if you don't know what kill mat is go check out our kill mat video and see all about it we give you a lot of information and how we solve the miracle of the way too loud dog house with kill mat then we have some can spray foam specifically window sealer spray foam it's um the kind that doesn't expand near as much it seals and it helps insulate and we were worried about cutting that much of our subfloor out the bathroom being hard to temperature control so we saw a video um, of a guy who sprayed this underneath and then set the plan in place and then put um, something weighted on top of it uh, for at least 24 hours so this stuff will fill all those gaps and then help insulate it just a little bit more so that is what we are doing next picking up the pan putting a layer of kill mat filling in um, the holes with this spray foam putting it back down putting something to weigh it down on yes. permanently shower pan installed <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please go down and give it a big thumbs up. I know that these plumbing videos or our latest videos have been all over the place, but because we're really trying to get stuff done out there, we've been a little bit all over the place with our projects and our days, and a lot of rain has been affecting us. But anyways, we're here now. We're glad to bring you these videos, and we thank you guys so much for all of your support. Please comment down below what you like about the videos or what you're excited to see next, what you think about our shower pan and how that whole bathroom situation is gonna go. And please stay tuned for our next video where we show you more about how we're actually plumbing these things into the tank with all the connections that I showed you. If you haven't already, please go down and subscribe. If you have, thank you so much. If you can share our videos, it really helps get our name out there and share what we're trying to do. And it really, really is the best way to support us liking, subscribing, and commenting. If you are interested in any of the supplies that we are using, we're gonna link them all down below and it's gonna be in our Amazon store. You can check that out and see we have categories of all the different types of stuff we're using. And no matter what, please always don't forget to enjoy life, stay positive, and get out there and keep going places. Suckers!